When I first saw velvet on this packaging, it just made me think there was a tiny t-shirt in here and no liquid. But I can assure you, there is actually something in here. A t-shirt there. It could be ink and a t-shirt. Whoa! What's up YouTube, I'm J-Rod of Balgrau Production, and today we are taking a look at the Handy Art Black Velvet Waterproof India Ink. I've never heard of Black Velvet Ink before, I've never heard of Handy Art, but when I saw this ink, I had to pick up my local Hobby Lobby, not sponsored. But why did I pick it up, besides the fact that it offers things I've never seen before? Well, one, it is super cheap. This is $4.99 for 4 fluid ounces, which is pretty impressive. This also is made in America, and on top of that, this ink does offer quite a bit, as on the front of packaging it says, that is intense, smooth flowing and high opaque. This permanent wash based carbon black ink is ideal for calligraphy, drawing, brushwork, airbrushing, and is a multiple media wash used on paper, board, or more. It is light fast and fade proof. So right off the bat, you see this ink is definitely trying to say, hey, I do it all and I am offering way too much. Now, one thing that I do want to talk about real quick is this ink bottle has way more in common with a traditional pan of paint. Like, look at this. This is a paint bottle. It's got the whole paint top here. It's squishy. It's soft. If you compare it to other ink wells, yeah, it just stands out because it's just very odd shaped and very tall. Four fluid ounces for $5 isn't bad as many of these inks are one fluid ounce and they can range up from $5.99 all the way up to like $9.99. So my question for this is, is will this ink be garbage? You know, is it just too cheap? Is it too diluted? Can it live up to its claims? But now we've taken a look at the bottle and some of the little specs that it offers. Let's go ahead and test it out in our Batman sketchbook. All right, first dip, first impression. Okay, it's smooth, yes. But I am noticing there's some bleed. Oh, that's some really, really bad bleeding right there. That's not good. I think that's gonna be more because of the paper that we're using than the actual ink itself. All right, testing it with our quill nib. Same thing. It's smooth, we're getting some good line variation line width it's flowing off the nib we're getting some ugly edging and bleeding i don't like i'm noticing it more on the thicker lines than the small lines. how is this going to work with a brush that's where my curiosity is and where a lot of our deciding factors are going to go into so let's go ahead and do that super quick it's not bad. Again, it's smooth. It's a very smooth ink. But here, not 100% black I'm noticing. There's some graying, which isn't good. Our lines are staying true black as they dry. Uh, it does look like it dries quickly, which I can at least say, hey, that's good on you. Create like a cool little fur texture right there. Look at that. So yeah, no, that's that's definitely important to know because here we're getting more gray than black. And I don't know if that's because of the paper. It might be because when we do get inks that bleed and edge, it tends to be because of the paper we use because it's just a cheap sketchbook but it's our batman sketchbook we got to use it you know it's tradition here on the channel and i think predicting from what i can tell from our tests you know with our lines and everything that it's going to work pretty well on the bristol board but it won't be anything amazing i'm honestly just kind of disappointed by this gray it's drying quickly though i can say that like the, the dry time is very nice curious how this is also going to ink wash too so let's go ahead and do that super quick let's mix some water put that down grab some more water Put that down. Not ink wash as well. There's no, there's no texture problems I see. Uh, it is waterproof. It did say that, so we go we work that in pretty well, which is good because the piece that I think we'll be doing involves a lot of ink washes, as a lot of my pieces tend to do. But no, I, I actually do think this is a really good ink so far. Of course, these are our dabble tests. You know, we're swatching it. We're just kind of dabbling with it a little bit before we get into the real test for it. But no, again, I'm predicting that it's going to work well. It's not really going to pose any problems. It's very smooth. One thing that I will say that I don't like, and you kind of saw it in the footage, is the way you actually empty this ink with this little top cap here. I don't like that because it may be difficult to control it because it's very liquidy. And these caps are really meant for paint, which is going to be more kind of like a gooey, slimy substance. For a liquid, this doesn't work really well. I would prefer just a normal cap or maybe even an eyedropper. And I'm not the biggest fan of eyedroppers, so you know it's bad when I'm saying you should do an eyedropper. But we did our test. I'm going to show you guys the illustration super quick and then we'll jump into our time lapse so now that we've done our swatch test and we have an understanding of what this ink is like and capable of the illustration that we'll be doing today is one i did of wrath where i actually used a reference of a 
bat covering half of his face with his wing. That was really cool. So I translated that into this illustration and we're just going to ink it. We'll do some gray wash and some line work, some brush work, and we'll really just have fun making this piece awesome. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Super Time Lapse. Inking this piece was not a challenge at all. However, I was expecting a little bit more of it as it described itself as a velvet ink. I expected some more properties to it that I didn't see or find apparent in my test. So when I went to the inking, I kept an open mind to see what would happen and nothing really did. This ink is okay. It's not amazing or game changing, but it's not horrible. And I really did enjoy using it. My main complaint was actually, believe it or not, after I did the ink wash, as even though this ink does advertise that it's smudge proof and fade proof, it really isn't as a lot of the areas around the smoke that were hit heavily during the ink wash started to fade and parts of the paper were being seen through. So I just had to get my brush and retouch those areas up. It was really weird and I wasn't expecting that because it said it was smudge proof, but it was a quick fit. My only real struggle with this piece was if you look on Ralph's wing throughout most of the piece, I actually smudged it and then I had to clean it up with some white ink. I don't know why. I thought it was fully dry and when I went to just make sure, it just wasn't. So that was kind of annoying, but I just gave it an extra 15 minutes to dry in between layers and then I was good for the rest of the piece. It was fun, enjoyable, and that ink wash, while time consuming, was very therapeutic and relaxing. I just listened to a Dead Meat podcast and enjoyed the entire process. But now let's go ahead and take a look at our finished product. And we're done. Guys, I absolutely love how this piece came out. Easily my top 10 favorite pieces of year. It has a lot of elements that I like, such as lightning, a splatter effect, good silhouette, and a lot of tonal variety. So again, it's just super, super fun. I love how it came out. And if you guys like it, go ahead and check out that first link in the description down below where you can get a $1 digital download of this piece and get an awesome desktop background. It really just helped the channel out and we all appreciate it. But putting my self promo to the side, let's talk about the ink itself. And my predictions in the swatch test were accurate. It's nothing spectacular, nothing amazing nothing groundbreaking it's just okay the only thing that I would say that sticks out and makes this ink really good is its price range you know $4.99 $5 for four fluid ounces is really good and the ink itself was okay I was happy with the results I got I had a few problems here and there with it actually fading during the ink wash but I could touch it up pretty easy it was just a little annoying and I don't think this little head right here is really good seriously this is for paint not ink it's just gonna make a mess and because of that on my scale of 1 to 10 I'm actually gonna give this thing a 7 I I think for the, the price you're paying and the amount you get, it's good. This is a great ink for beginners. This is a good ink for someone on a budget. Or if you just want to do a YouTube channel like I do with ink reviews, there you go. Or if you just want to do like practice sketch with this ink so you don't use your expensive ones, this is also good for it too. The pigment itself is pretty strong. As you can see, I tried to wash my hands and it's not coming off. And I really do like the results I got with it. And the ink wash was very enjoyable with this thing. So I think it earns that rating. And I would love to hear your guys' opinions in the comment section down below. Have you used this ink? Do you think it's awesome? Do you think it's bad? Do you think it's horrible? On top of that, I also like to hear what you guys think of my artwork. Do you think that it's awesome? Do you think it sucks? What are some of the areas you think that I could use improvement on? I love to hear them in that comment section down below. Like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more art and animation based content. Remember, I'm J. Ron of Balabar Productions and I draw power in my own soul.